wise person once told me that when you feel troubled on the inside, that's the time to go external. Find that thing that is meaningful to you, that is greater than yourself, where you can make an impact. The past several months have left a lot of us feeling troubled on the inside. Health, job security, the availability of toilet paper, everything feels uncertain as the pandemic continues to affect normal life. But for some, self-quarantine isn't just about staying at home, it's about providing one. I started volunteering with Tent Life. Initially, I was just going to clean the kennels and be at the space where the public would come in and talk to them about the cats. And when COVID-19 happened, they sent out kind of an urgent email asking for anyone that would be willing to take in cats. And we took in a chicken and duck. As rescue shelters all over the United States began to scale back on staff and service hours, an army of fosters stepped up to give the animals a safe place to stay until they found a forever home. Having plenty of free time, it just kind of gave me a sense of purpose. I really respect Tent Life and all the people there, and I just really wanted to, to help make a difference and kind of ease the, the pain of them having to close down the facility. Siblings Chicken and Duck found themselves in a foster home with three other cats and a dog. In situations like this, giving the new additions their own space and a slow introduction to the other pets helps them to ease into an unfamiliar environment. I don't think all fosters probably will get acclimated to the home that they're living in. You know, that's kind of not the goal. You know, the goal is to show them off and, and help get them adopted. But Chicken and Duck had other plans. Very quickly, they made themselves right at home, and I think within like two weeks, we decided to adopt them and make them part of our big family, so. Tenth Life's main focus is on cats with special developmental or medical needs, and that includes orphaned or feral kittens. This year, COVID and kitten season hit at roughly the same time, bringing veteran caregivers AJ and Ben Trujillo back into action. This was the right time. There's no bad time, but this was especially good. Yes. Neonatal kittens tend to need extra time, and that can be really difficult when we're both working full time. Uh, this was a great opportunity because we're home. There are three kittens right now, two of which are special needs and need that extra hands-on attention that we're happy to give. They grew a little backwards, mm -hmm. so they need to be stretched. And so you do a little kitty yoga? Yeah, so we kind of just stretch her. They're fantastic. We, <laughs> they, I mean, they bring us so much joy. Whole little individuals with quirks and peculiarities. Even when your household has a basket of kittens to focus on, this season of increased togetherness does have its ups and downs. We're home way more than we ever were before, so maybe we're all getting a little overexposed to each other. <laughs> As a team working together, overcoming like some of the interpersonal challenges that arise from this joint endeavor <laughs> is, I, I would say, makes us better as partners. Although nurturing these tiny creatures can be a joy, it's also a challenge. They are so fragile. They can be healthy and awesome one day and a few hours later they can be in crisis. So you really have to stay on top of them, weigh them every day and, and just make sure that they're on the right path. In terms of the pandemic, it's more challenging because it's more difficult to get in to see veterinarians. But for pet owners in East St. Louis, this was already true, long before the virus shut things down. When COVID hit, it didn't necessarily change things as much because life in East St. Louis often is uncertain or transient. It's a pretty high poverty level here, and a lot of businesses have been fortunately shut down. It really is a resource desert for pet owners, so uh, there's no veterinary clinics, there's no pet supply stores. Um, so things that are really common, like flea and tick preventative, heartworm preventative vaccines, are currently not available in East St. Louis. In response to this need, Gateway Pet Guardians recently moved into the old Miles Davis Elementary School and began to serve East St. Louis and the surrounding areas. By providing inexpensive care and resources like a pet food pantry, their goal is to empower owners who are experiencing financial or logistical barriers to keep the animals they love instead of surrendering them to a shelter. While many of their programs and services are temporarily on hold, 
affordable vaccinations are still available as a drive through service on Saturdays. Though many shelters are currently closed to the public, there's still a lot to do to process rescued animals and place them in foster homes. So even if you can't foster, there are a lot of other ways to help out. I'm here because my wife also volunteers here and she talked me into doing this and actually it was a, it was a good thing because I've, I've been photographing for years and years and years and this is a good way to get back into it and to, to do some good with it as well. The photos are posted to Gateway's website so that potential adopters can get to know the available cats and dogs from afar. While Brian is taking photos, his wife Lisa walks dogs, does laundry, or cleans at the Gateway facility. She's been volunteering with animals for two decades, but is still amazed at the transformative power of kindness. Seeing an animal that was shut down when they came in, that first tail wag, it's that first sign of trust that they're actually coming out of things and they're gonna be okay. To feel like I've had some small part in that is incredible. Just like many nonprofits, animal rescues are struggling since donations are down and large fundraising events seem unlikely for the foreseeable future, which means volunteers are more important than ever. Time is a very valuable resource that people can donate. As a foster, you get to take advantage of the resources of the charity. So they'll provide food and they'll provide veterinary care and you're just providing a home and, and making sure that you're spending time paying attention to the animal and socializing the animal. Socialization is vital not only to the behavior of the dog or the cat, but to the successful integration of the animal into their adoptive family. You don't necessarily know what background they've come from, what traumas they've had in their life. Don't expect to have the perfect pet right off because they need time to decompress. I mean, they've come from somewhere that they don't know. Now they're with people that they don't know. They have to learn that it's a safe place. I can tell you when I met Bryson the first day, he was ruined. He was just so dejected. Bryson was an emergency rescue, and it was Matt who answered the call as a first-time foster for Gateway. Both had recently gone through some rough times. My wife and I bought the main house in 17. Um, she got sick in 18, spent 300 days in the hospital. She didn't survive it. Um, she passed on Christmas Eve, and the house was pretty, pretty big now. Hoping it would ease his loneliness, Matt's daughter had encouraged him to take in a foster, just as shelters were beginning to ask for help. He came home with me, and I just love this dog. <laughs> I do. Ready? But my job was to get him adopted. Outdoor meet and greets between the animal and potential adopters is an important step from foster home to forever home. The second one, I thought he was perfect. Two little girls, big backyard, all fenced. Oh man, my stomach was just in knots. I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna say, can we keep them? And they never did. I was driving back home, and I'm like, oh, thank God that didn't work out. <laughs> and I think within two days of that, that's when I adopted him. Later I looked back, it was actually Kathy and my anniversary. Empty shelters don't just mean empty kennels. When an animal is given a home, it gives back. No matter what's going on in your life, Sadness, heartache, fun, happiness, joy, you know, they, they live it all with you and they, they bring it all to you. Lots of things are stressful right now in the world and even work and being at home is, is difficult. One thing my fiance and I talk about a lot is how awesome it is to like always have a cat or a dog in the room. They're all therapy animals to me, so. Even when your motivation might come from a place of fear or uncertainty, if you can turn that into positive action do like in the smallest way it counts it's incredible for you it's incredible for the pet it will be a life-changing event for both of you you both need each other you just don't know it for living st louis i'm kara vanninger